seriously, can this thing work on any of my printers? I received this Creality 3D pad from Creality to test. Retails for about $88.99 from their website. Claimed that uh, it could be used on any Marlin 3D printer. Well, let's take a look at it. <laughs> well, right away, this back looks kind of familiar. Yeah, it looks like a wall jack for a phone. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at the rest of this. It's very glossy. Yes, yeah, so you can see what I'm recording with and see the ceiling in my garage but on the right hand side here we have a USB reader as well as a micro SD reader for all your files so it's supposed to read both and next we have the user manual doesn't really go over much just a couple pictures if they're in the pictures how it's connected and the menu interface with a QR code on the back. Seems like everyone's getting to this type of packaging box in a box in a box. I guess it started with like Apple and how they used to package things. And uh, ignore me, I'm just trying to open this. And it looks like we get a whole bunch of uh, cords here. Which one's this one? Uh, standard uh, mini USB cable. And, um, yeah, <laughs> looks like a standard uh, telephone cable for all you people out there. Yes, we used to use telephone cables for house phones. Don't really do that anymore. I don't have a house phone anymore. And what is this? We have a Oh, USB-C cable. Oh, this one's just for the power, though. Don't get uh, too uh, excited. And next, we have the micro-USB. As we dig more into this, it uh, seems like we get... Um, like or magnets. I don't have a clue. It's nowhere in the literature and um, I guess we'll save it and put it off to the side. Uh, well, I guess we'll take this out next. Uh, you get a filament runout sensor. Just in case if your printer doesn't come with one, you could use the supplied one that attaches to the 3D pad. And looks like last but not least is uh, the connection box. I guess that's what we'll call it, the connection hub, where everything connects together. Um, where your phone cable and USB cords and filament run out all plug into this. And I don't know what this is. I guess it's double-sided tape, various squares and rectangles. Don't know what that's for. And that's it. Nothing else is in the box. However, I did forget to mention that you do get a filament runout cable. It just fell out of the box. So I figured I'd just mention it. And somehow all of these wires connect, well, not all of them, but a majority of these wires connect to the junction box. And um, now we have it all connected. That is a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> I think some cable management would be needed. How many wires do you need? Now, what do I plug this into? Seems like you buy a $90 product, it should come with something to plug into. <laughs> nope, not included. Go figure. Somebody give me a charger! Once you find your own USB 1 amp charger, go ahead and plug it in. 
There's no on off switch, the display just turns on by itself. And let's go ahead and take a good look at this. It's very vibrant and uh, has a real nice look to it. It's still pretty reflective, but it's going to be. And it's got some annoying um, sounds to make. <laughs> very glary. And uh, it's very responsive, though. A lot of the menus don't work because it's not attached to a printer. So uh, I guess we're going to have to attach it to a printer to see how these work. <laughs> As you see, not responsive. Well, let's go ahead and try another menu and see if we get something out of there. Control. Well, you get temperature, system info, brightness, language, beep, and factory reset. Well, it looks like I can't really uh, navigate any of the other menus without being attached to a printer. So let's talk about today's video sponsor. This video sponsor is PCBWay. You're looking for a PCB? No, well, PCBWay has you covered. It's a one-stop shop. PCB prototype, SMD stencils, an assembly, flexible PCBs, and advanced PCBs. And they also offer CNC and 3D printing. Talk about one-stop shop. No order is too big or too small. You want just a few? You want hundreds? Well, you can go ahead and come here. They can also do up to 14 layers. They do 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal, you name it. They actually can do it. You want to do prototype PCB assemblies? They got you covered with that as well, as well as advanced PCBs. Right now, PCB Way is doing a contest. It's the fourth PCB design contest. Ah, let's see what this is about. This design contest theme is Internet of Things. Looking at home automation, wearables, and other interesting projects. And the other one is robotics. It can also be combined with smart cars, drones, and other automated projects. You want to be sure that you submit it on time. It goes from August 9th to November 30th. So definitely want to make sure that uh, they get your submittal on time so they can review it and uh, pick a winner. Be sure to check their rules and everything uh, because you want to make sure that you follow everything so your project is legit. And there's some great prizes too. First place is $1,500 cash plus a $200 coupon and a Raspberry Pi 4. Nice. I want to thank PCB Wave for sponsoring this video. So now let's go ahead and continue on to testing this Creality 3D pad and see if it's worth buying. And you may recognize this. This is the first test, the Creality CR6SC. Well, this is actually running the Big Tree Tech SKR board as well as the community firmware. It is based off of Marlin, so let's see if it works. Just like with all the printers we're gonna test, you're gonna plug in the USB into the port and this one takes the micro USB. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the printer. As you see right now, we have the screensaver on and uh, I'm, this is on an angle, that plug. I'm not sure if I like it, but as you can see, it still says connected or not connected. What does it say? Connect. Okay, well, well, maybe what we should do is turn off the printer and then turn it back on and see if that works. So far it still says connect. Hmm. Well, not looking good. It still says connect. I noticed something weird is happening on the display on my printer though. It's not booting. It's still staying there. That usually takes just a few seconds for it to power up. Odd. Nope. It's giving me a message. Okay. It's taking a lot longer than normal to load. So I guess what we'll do is unplug the 3D pad and um, power cycle the printer. I uh, always get nervous plugging anything into the USB in the front of this Creality CR6SE. But 
I think I've resolved all those issues. <laughs> but just want to be sure that it turns back on and it boots back up. And it looks like we're all good. So, yep, it looks like uh, the 3D pad does not work with the community firmware and the BTT board. So, let's continue on to another test. Here we have the Kaiwu Tycoon Slim. Yes, it's a real nice printer. Did a review on it, and you could check out the review. Actually, you could check out the reviews on all the printers I have listed in this test. Same process. This is another micro USB. We're going to plug it in. Screen is on screensaver mode, and it says connect. Hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and power cycle the printer and see if that does anything for us. And we're going to wait. It does take a few seconds for the Kaiwu to boot up. And we would think... Yep. Uh, says it's ready, but display doesn't. Hmm. Let's go ahead and unplug the display and plug that back in and see if that does anything for us. And we're going to wait. And this is all real time, everyone. I know, you're at the edge of your seats with an excitement. Oh, look at that. It's connected. All right. Let's go ahead. Up, oh, connect. Uh, all right. Well, it doesn't seem like to work with the Kaiwu Slim Tycoon Slim next printer. Next, we're gonna try the Artillery Hornet. <laughs> I never even got the chance to finish review on this because it literally just fell apart on me as I was using it. The heat creep is so bad, but this is running pure Marlin on here, and you'll be able to see it on display once we boot it up. We're gonna have to use the printer cable that it came with because it takes a standard printer USB cable. I think it's type A. As you see in the screen when I booted up, it said Marlin. So this is what this display should work with. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we come up with. Screen saver on. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Eventually. And we plugged it in. Nothing. A sigh as you hear me. Still says connected. Okay, well. Unplug the display. Plug it back in. Reboot it. See if that does anything. And. like it. Oh! I think we have a connection. Let's go ahead and hit leveling. Up. Oh. <laughs> Connect. Okay, so even with this Artillery Hornet running Marlin, we still cannot get this connect. <laughs> I really don't know what this display is used for. So for our three printers, no luck. It's not like I use this one anyways. I have, it's going to cost me more to fix it than it is worth anything. So let's continue on to another printer. Going from an Artillery machine that I don't use to a Terry machine that I love to use. This is actually the genius. It's one of my favorite printers. And um, the display on here is really nice for a touchscreen. It doesn't have any advanced features. Well, neither does the Creality 3D pad. So let's give this one a shot. It takes the same cable as uh, the Hornet. Of course, I can never insert it the correct way. And we're going to try this again. Remember, we are always trying to Plug it in with the machine on first, and then we'll power cycle the machine and see if that works. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And what do we have here? Connect, once again. Okay, <laughs> starting to see a pattern here. So let's go ahead and power cycle the Genius. Let's get this in focus, there we go because actually it powers up the display and power up the printer same thing connect so once we get in focus yep connect nothing this is not looking good <laughs> the screensaver kicked on yes we are doing very well here 
we're going to even power cycle the display one more time just to be sure. we go we are connected leveling nope connect <laughs> you gotta be kidding me uh, all right let's go to one more printer and then we'll call it a day we're gonna be doing the Creality Ender 5 Plus now this is heavily modified if you've been following my channel you know that I modified this printer a lot it's using the SKR 1.4 turbo and it's using the 3.5 inch dual touch display both are big tree tech and I've uh, loaded my own firmware on here it is running Marlin so this should work <laughs> and again we're gonna be using the USB type a cord on the side okay the under 5 plus is powered up and the display is powered up let's put in a communication port drop some things and uh, screensaver still on and it still says connect. Lovely. Yes, the only thing is to power off the Ender 5 Plus. And then we're going to turn it back on and see if uh, this does anything. Still says connect. We're waiting for the Ender 5 Plus to boot up. And again, this is a Marlin and it should work. It is a Marlin printer. Let me move my hand out of the way and you'll be able to see the display. Yep, Marlin. And then per Creality, should work with any FDM Marlin printer. Still so says connect. And I think the last thing to try is unplug the display, took it from the power, plug it back in, and see what happens. And let's wait for it to turn on. So far I've seen a pattern here. We power cycle the display and it seems to last for a few seconds. Yep, connect, connect. I don't know. I've tried it on multiple printers and I can't get this thing to work on any of them. And they're all Marlin based FDMs, which Quality says it should work. So. I think we're done here. <laughs> I think it proved a point that at least with the printers that I have, it doesn't work. So what are my final thoughts on this uh, 3D pad? Well, I think you know. It doesn't work. It doesn't work on the printers I tested with, and that's about half the printers. I wasn't about to test anymore. I mean, look at this. Is this how you're supposed to store the 3D pad? Look at this mess of wires. It doesn't even come with a stand. Uh, it's just absolutely frustrating. It really is. That side was during the while well, I was filming. <laughs> and this is, a, of course, a narration, a voiceover. So, yes, I was frustrated, to say the least. I just don't see the need for this at all. You're not gaining any advanced functionality through the display that a normal stock touchscreen display may offer. No advanced menus or anything. Plus, it uses up the USB port on the front. So if you're running like a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint, guess what? You can't use it with if you're going to use that pad. And considering that you could get a Raspberry Pi and hook it up for about the same price, I would suggest that you go with a Raspberry Pi route instead. And um, I just do not recommend even purchasing this. I really appreciate you tuning into Tripods Garage, and I really hope they have a wonderful day weekend, or evening, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage. You fail!